The Global Anglican Future Conference, GAF, convened a movement of global family of authentic Anglicans standing together to retain and restore the Bible to the heart of Anglican communion, has commenced the GAF Conform meeting with an opening ceremony welcoming all delegates to Kigali in Rwanda. Having the theme for the conference, To Whom Shall We Go?, the conference had about 1,000 300 people from 53 nations of the world to chart the way forward on the need to transform the gospel of Jesus Christ, proclaiming him to the world. In his welcome address, the Gafcon chairman, Archbishop Foley Beach, appreciating God for all the years, despite the challenges, said God worked out all things for the good of his people. He encouraged all to go back and spread the gospel, urging them to turn away from their sins. So as we gather this week from all over the world, I want to encourage you to keep the following in mind as we travel together this week and then we return to our own provinces. I would like to share what I call the four marks of a continuing spirit-filled movement. Or rather we could say four marks of modern Anglicanism. You see, we could go on playing church, being religious, and even making bold statements and make no spiritual impact on our world. What a tragedy that would be. We want to see true revival break out and spread to every part of the world. The question each of us must ask ourselves, is there something in my life which the Lord has shown me of which I need to repent? If we're going to be the people of God that the Lord wants us to be, we must be a repenting church. If we want true spiritual awakening, we must be a repenting church. We must be a reconciling church. A reconciling church. When I speak of reconciliation, I'm not talking about being reconciled with the world or with sin or with sinful behavior or giving up one's principles or compromising biblical truth in order to be reconciled. The scriptures tell us that we are all ministers of reconciliation and that we're being reconciled with one another as well. This reconciliation is based on the cross of Jesus, on the truth of the scriptures, but not compromising the teaching of the scriptures. In their separate remarks, GAFCON General Secretary, the Most Reverend Dr. Benjamin Kwashi and the Primate of Rwanda, who is the host, Archbishop Laurent Mbanda, warned against inescapable consequences of rejecting the authority of God's word, as GAFCON desires to bring and keep in the Bible at the center of everything they do. Jesus gave clear warnings that some would turn away and the trouble and persecution would come. But he added, take heed, I have overcome the world, hallelujah. And he further said, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Take note of the power of the gospel. The world around us is falling into growing state of confusion and in some cases disintegration. But it is a part of the gospel which can turn things around. The gospel of Jesus Christ carries the power of God. The effect of the gospel will be seen in the life of whoever believes in that gospel, no matter their nationality, tribe or gender. And the fruit of the gospel will be seen in righteousness, in holiness, service, development, health, and in physical and spiritual blessings that accompany that person in the community. The Christian gospel does not destroy, it builds. It brings life in all fullness to everybody without discrimination. When the tough gets going, we become disillusioned, we get confused, and things start going south. The prophet Jeremiah, in chapter 23, verse 26, warns against inescapable consequences of rejecting the authority of God's word. Gafcon wants and desires and commits to bringing and keeping the Bible at the center. Let us keep the unchanging word of God. There was a goodwill message from the Prime Minister of Rwanda, Right Honorable Edward Ngerente, as delegates were entertained with Rwandan cultural dance.